we cannot do it alone. People think, often people think they are alone, and I won't kid you, divorce is a lonely process, and it's so important to have the support network in place. And that could look like any number of things, and coaching could be one of them. And for some people, coaching is a tremendous skill set and tremendous gift, and other people, they can find what they need in other places. I'm very much about encouraging people to do what works for them as opposed to me mandating or telling them what to do. My guest today is a woman of many skills. Jen Ushold is a physical therapist, certified functional manual therapist, therapeutic pain specialist, certified lifestyle medicine coach, and a holistic divorce coach. Jen is a passionate educator and has taught with several clinics across the country. She believes in integrating wellness coaching with the other therapies that she offers and approaches treatment in a holistic way through her private practice, 180 Therapy and Wellness. Jen is also the founder and owner of recently launched divorce coaching service called I Rise For Me, where she helps clients approach the stressful process of divorce from a place of calm and confidence. Jen, welcome to the show. I'm so happy to have you here. Thank you. I'm so thrilled to be here. Awesome. So let's just go right into it. As a woman with so many degrees and certifications and specialties and already running a successful private practice, you're also a program director and mom of three. Why did you decide to add divorce coaching to your plates? That's so easy. Passion to help people. Mm. It was such a challenging experience and I'm in different support groups um, for divorce. Mm -hmm. I think I'm involved in two or three different ones. Mm -hmm. And it is fascinating how similar our stories are mm -hmm. and how different our approaches are. And I've been going through this process for a long time. We had two failed mediations and then I did a complete 180, so to speak, mm -hmm. in my preparation for the third. And I've been told you can't mediate with some types of personalities, and we did. We got to a signed agreement by the end of the day, and I started to wonder, is this something other people could benefit from? Yes. Tell us a little bit about what it is about this particular life transition, divorce, that makes having a coach so helpful. We cannot do it alone. People think, often people think they are alone, and I won't kid you, divorce is a lonely process, and it's so important to have the support network in place. Mm -hmm. And that could look like any number of things, and coaching could be one of them. Mm -hmm. And for some people, coaching is a tremendous skill set and tremendous gift, and other people, they can find what they need in other places. I'm very much about encouraging people to do what works for them as opposed to me mandating or telling them what to do. Yeah. What are some of the effects of navigating a divorce that a lot of people don't consider when they're in the midst of it? I think the loneliness takes a lot of us by surprise. Mm -hmm. And it's not the picture we had for our future, right? When you first get married, whether you're five years in or 25 years in, you don't look at your 50s and your 60s and your 70s alone. Mm -hmm. So dealing with that change in this path that you've been on for years or decades, that can be very challenging. Yeah. And there probably are some smooth divorces, but for the most part, there are going to be some significant bumps and obstacles along the way that we aren't really prepared for. Mm -hmm. And at the same time, we aren't going to be able to anticipate everyone, which is why having a process in place so that you can roll with it as opposed to be crushed by it. Yeah, yeah. And I know everyone's divorce obviously is very different, but what would you say are some of the most common struggles that clients come to you with and help in, in needing your assistance with um, guiding them through this very painful process? Yeah, so the divorce groups that I'm part of are both just most of us are divorcing difficult personalities. And so a challenging personality could be controlling, manipulative, 
um, impulsive. So there's any number of things and not getting into diagnoses or things, challenging personalities are challenging. We've all come across them. And for many of us, it is a lack of using our voice. Uh, Our voice has been dampened or just become obsolete. A lot of fear around the unknown fear of how this person might respond, fear of what's going to happen with our children, fear of financial security. And those are the common things that we see in divorce. Also that social peace, judgment from others, different religions see divorce differently. So there's just a whole host of things. You just aren't sure what's going to come your way. Mm -hmm. (laughs) Mm -hmm. How does the service that you provide your clients through I Rise For Me build on your skills as a physical therapist and as an expert in pain science? I have been so fortunate to be mentored by amazing physical therapists throughout my entire career. And in terms of physical therapy, I've always been a very broad physical therapist. I've always included the entire human. I remember my very first job, which I'm dating myself, 1991. um, I would tell people, my goal is to help you help yourself. So that's a coaching mantra, even though I didn't know it at the time. And so I always consider the human in front of me as opposed to the body part. Mm -hmm. And that's what you need to do with coaching as well. Pain science and lifestyle medicine And the approach I'm using with the divorce mediation preparation, they're all so similar. Life is a continuum, health is a continuum, divorce is a continuum, and we can either be choosing to move forward, and those are certain behaviors and choices. We might be stagnant, and that's okay if that's where you are. And what we really want to do is kind of prevent or help people from that backslide, Mm -hmm. ending up with physical issues or mental health challenges or just frustration beyond all belief that they can no longer move forward. Why would you say having an integrated approach to your health and your wellness and your care, whether it's even with divorce coaching or pain management, why are Why is approaching it holistically so beneficial for us? I think it's beyond beneficial, and I'm not an always never person. However, we are complex human beings. In the pain science world, we like to say we're approaching people with a biopsychosocial lens. What that means is we're approaching all of you. We are not just biology. We definitely have emotional needs and mental health needs, and our culture and our society has a big influence on us as well. So I think in any type of healthcare, coaching, whether you're sp- coaching sports or whatever you're coaching, we need to be looking at the human. Yeah. I work with athletes mm-hmm. and it's challenging sometimes because they're seen for what they can provide as opposed to who they are as the human. And something, something's gonna give. Our systems can only take so much. Absolutely. What have you experienced about the connection between trauma, pain, shame, those, those really um, difficult emotions that come from divorce? What, what have you seen how it affects us, both our physical health and also our mental health? What are some of the things that you've seen? Yeah, that's a big question. In the world of pain science, uh, people often connect. One of the myths is that if I have pain, I must have tissue damage, something wrong with a muscle, a ligament, a tendon. And the reality is about 30% of people who have chronic or persistent pain, they've never had an injury or a surgery. Mm -hmm. So we have to think back, okay? If if 30% of people have pain, we also know that all pain is real. We have never scanned fake pain, and it just be digging, doing a little bit of detective work to determine, is the source of this pain the biology? Is the source of this pain pressure from your home, pressure from your job? Is the source of this pain stressors or trauma, as you brought up? And the reality is, it's all of it. And so the challenge with doing pain science and lifestyle medicine, and they just perfectly flow into divorce mediation prep, is... What are the pieces that are significant for you? And what are your options? And what options do you choose to make work for you? One of the reasons why I wanted to have you on the show, even though I've never been married, um, I I think with divorce, even if you've been in a long-term relationship that ends, it can often feel the same. Even if you have, um, you never got married, but you had a child with someone and now you're breaking up forever. And that has effects as well. It can really translate. Can you talk a little bit about how our, how having a broken heart actually affects our physical and our mental well-being? 
they've actually done research on this. Mm. And they have seen couples who have been married for, you know, 60, 70, 80 years, and one spouse dies. And there was one story, I wish I could cite it for you, but I can't, where I think the husband and wife were holding hands, and the one spouse passed away, Mm -hmm. and within moments, the other Mm -hmm. spouse passed away. So our emotions are intimately connected to our physical body, and we just can't disconnect them. And there's an amazing book called The Body Keeps the Score by Bessel van der Kolk. Mm -hmm. You're familiar with Mm -hmm. it? Yes, and for your audience, uh, he's really just talking about how trauma is held in the body. And if we don't find a way to process it and there's many different ways depending on the person in the situation we're going to have some struggles be it mental health issues be it relationship issues be it physical issues and so it's very important that we're addressing all of these things as a physical therapist and pain management expert what do you what are some things that you offer your clients to do are they exercises are they stretches like what how does that work as far as the whole holistic care there Yeah, so my training in pain science, we like to talk about um, four main pillars. So the first pillar is education, and we actually have these amazing fMRI, fancy brain scans, of people who you could see that they had no pain showing up. We call them blobs, pretty Mm -hmm. much, just for simplicity. On the scan, then they do a very simple movement, and the brain lights up in a pain response, and then they have a 20-minute pain education session, Mm -hmm. and their pain response on the scan calms down beautifully. Mm -hmm. So understanding pain is a tremendous step to alleviating pain. Understanding what's ahead for you in mediation or divorce is a major step to alleviating those fears and being able to show up in a calm and confident manner. Our other pillars are exercise because we know that nerves love movement and blood flow and that helps them calm down. So it's not uncommon for people to say, oh, when I start moving and walking, I feel better. Yes, Mm -hmm. you do. Mm -hmm. Let's work on that. And then our other two of the four main pillars are um, sleep and having goals. Mm -hmm. Sleep is unfortunately kind of perceived as a luxury in our society when sleep is actually an essential component of health. Uh, It's fascinating because there's a great book by Matthew Walker, Why We Sleep. And he talks about when we gain that hour of sleep in the fall, they actually see, I think it's a 21% reduction in heart attacks the Monday after. And when we have that hour that we lose in the spring, there's a 24% increase in heart attacks on that Monday in ERs. Mm. Isn't that fascinating? So fascinating. Wow. So on top of those four, which are very powerful altogether, then we have 20, we call it PNE Plus, um, Pain Neuroscience Education Plus, 20 or more options to reduce the effects and the experience of pain that are all non-pharmacological, which is a beautiful thing. Can we back up a little bit and talk more about the importance of sleep? Because it's something that I talk about a lot with my weight loss clients when they're like, I'm too busy to sleep, I can't fall asleep, I'll sleep when I'm dead. All of these things that I hear (laughs) that, um, and what I say to them is, you know, like if you're not getting enough sleep, your body holds on to fat. Can you talk to us about maybe for those, uh, those of us who do struggle with falling asleep, or staying asleep, how maybe that affects our body and maybe a few tips on how we could, where we can start to maybe improve our sleep quality. I am a sleep geek. (laughs) Um, So to address the weight issue, uh, we talk about paralyzed sleep. This is the work of Dr. Stasha Gamanek. She's a neurologist who used to specialize in headaches and then she became a sleep geek, even more than me. Uh, And so what she has found is that we release different hormones through the sleep cycle. And there's a hormone that helps us feel satiated or full during the day. And if we are not getting our deep restorative sleep, we are not emitting that hormone. And then we have hormones that make us feel hungry. So just the idea of getting the proper staging of sleep and deep versus REM versus the light stages, that helps us with hormones, which can help us with satiation, which is a cool little thing to realize. Uh, And then in terms of people falling asleep, that 
can be many different reasons. That's a longer conversation with them. You know, what is it? Is it the ticker tape going through your mind that's keeping you up? Is it, did you have caffeine at 4 p.m.? Is it you ate a big meal? Because the brain actually, everything shuts down when you go to sleep. And if you've eaten a meal at 10 p.m. and you go to bed at 10.30, then the brain has to pause its sleep and go into digestion mode. Mm -hmm. So all of these things can play a role. I divide sleep broadly into three main categories. The first is sleep hygiene. So what are things we can do? Uh, you know, there are two activities that your bedroom is for, sleep and sex mm -hmm. and nothing else. <laughs> <laughs> and so that can be a big challenging conversation. And uh, so sleep hygiene, there's many different things we could do there. I talk about sleep nutrition and what does that look like? Well, vitamin D, it's a commonly talked about vitamin now, it happens to be very essential for sleep. Mm -hmm. And it allows us to get into that deep paralyzed state. There's more to it, vitamin B, the microbiome. But for our purposes here, vitamin D can be very powerful. So even when people have good sleep hygiene, that may be, well, hey, do we talk to your doc about getting a vitamin D test? And then we go from there. Mm -hmm. So in the third area is airway. And so people who snore, people who grind their teeth, people who wake up, and I ask them, when you wake up, are your bed sheets messy or neat? I'm like, was there a circus or a corpse in there? <laughs> oh, a circus. <laughs> well, that tells me that they're not getting into those restorative stages of sleep. And what do we do about it? That depends. Mm -hmm. Sometimes we need a sleep study. Sometimes we can do, I can do manual work through the jaw and the neck and even intraoral work and we can make a change. Mm -hmm. But we want to be generally, we want that airway more similar to a straw than a coffee stirrer. Mm -hmm. And you can imagine how difficult it might be to sleep if all you've got is a coffee stirrer. Wow. Okay. That is fascinating as well. I didn't know that. Um, when, it comes to, when, when, when it comes to, for example, say one of your clients is going, going through a divorce and they want to maybe make over themselves or they're they're going after this like revenge body where it's just like, you know what, I'm going to make him regret ever leaving all of this. What are your thoughts around that? So I've had those moments <laughs> <laughs> and it's been a long healing journey. Uh, and I am actually currently in a coaching program called Positive Intelligence and it is blowing my mind. Mm. And it is just truly, I would say, in the last three to four weeks where I have... I didn't have the revenge body idea, but there were some things I'm like, ooh, I'm gonna get revenge. And I've shifted out. I'm no longer seeking, pursuing revenge. There may be some things where I believe we're going to be looking at accountability mm -hmm. for behaviors, and that's very different from revenge. Revenge promotes negativity. Mm -hmm. And if we are living in a negative space, that is what we're putting out to the world. Mm -hmm. And it's my belief and it's supported by the science that I'm learning. And that is what we'll get back. Yeah. It might feel good for a minute. Mm -hmm. It's not going to get you where you want to be. Right, right. That's true. What are some things that you believe we have to address when it comes to our health, whether it's physical or emotional, before we're able to really get that physical transformation that we may be looking for, whether it's uh, less pain, whether it's uh, losing weight, anything like that. What are some things that, that you think need to happen first? The best answer for that, which may sound like a cop-out, is what the client is willing and ready to do. Mm. So if I were to sit here and tell you, oh, sleep is A number one, and they're like, yeah, no, mm -hmm. I'm not going to go to bed before 2 a.m., then we aren't going to have a good relationship and they're not going to make any progress. Yeah. So it really comes down to what's most important for them. And I think before they can start, they have to know where they're going. Mm. So they have to have an intention of what their goals are. Is it weight loss? Well, what about weight loss? Because mm. losing weight for the sake of losing weight isn't really going to benefit them long term or short term. Is it because you value playing with your grandchildren? Mm -hmm. Is it because you want to be able to get up and down from your garden because that's what you do every fall and spring? So really connecting their why mm -hmm. to a deeper value yes. and then coming up together together. They know. Mm -hmm. They know what's capable of. We just sometimes need to help them find that and yeah. creatively problem solve and then coming up with a program that works for them. Absolutely. When someone, for example, 
come see you for physical therapy help or for pain management, say they have a lot of stress in their body. I know personally I hold it in my neck and in my shoulders, right? And I, I can always tell when I start sensing up. What are some things that um, that you offer to your clients when when they're when that's just like where they hold their stress when we're holding our stress, which, which is whether we're going through a divorce or breakup, it's just work is crazy. What are some things that that we can do to be a little bit more aware of what our body signals are sending us? Mm-hmm. And that awareness is absolutely key. Even mm-hmm. if you're becoming aware of some not helpful things your body is doing, developing that awareness allows you to make a different choice. Mm-hmm. And so I'm also in the process process of developing a program called the one minute me. Mm. And I have to thank a client because you know, the general recommendation is exercise 30 minutes. And she's like, I'm not gonna do that. And I said, Okay, I'm like, 15. She's like, No, mm. I'm like, five, no, mm-hmm. one. Oh, yeah, I can do one minute of exercise. And truly, that is where she started. Mm-hmm. So then I started to think, what else can we do in a minute? How much of your dishwasher can you get emptied? How much laundry can you fold? How many jumping jacks can you do? Mm. And most of us can find one minute. And so we can take all of the areas of health. We can do all the areas of divorce mediation. Can you give yourself one minute? Cool. How many times a day are you willing to give that to yourself? Mm. It's all about repetition. And one of my favorite pain science stories that matches this as well is um, I ask people if they have a child who used to argue with them about brushing their teeth. And (laughs) the child comes and says, Mom, you want me to brush my teeth 14 times a day? I'm sorry, you want me to brush my teeth twice a day, right? Yes. Okay, I got it all figured out, Mom. Mm -hmm. I'm gonna brush my teeth 14 times on Sunday and I'm good for the (laughs) week. (laughs) They usually get the picture that doing a lot all at once Mm -hmm. is not only not beneficial, it can be detrimental. Right. So that's where the one minute me came from. I love that. When my clients come to me, they want to lose weight. They want to lose it right now. They're like, I've been struggling my whole life or for the past 10 years or however long. And they want this, the immediacy of it. And sometimes they don't understand that it's such a process and we have to really unravel a lot of things. The way that I work holistically with weight loss is it, it really starts within. And, and then that reflects what's going on on the outside. And I'm sure similarly, with, with when clients come to you, they're maybe in shambles. They're maybe completely heartbroken. And it's almost like, here is my mess. Mm-hmm. Where do we start? <laughs> exactly. <laughs> so, so where do you start? It starts with a pretty in-depth evaluation. They tell me their story. Mm-hmm. And uh, in the pain science world, really getting their story mm-hmm. makes so much of a difference in terms of our relationship. Yeah. They don't even realize some of the things that have gone on until you ask the powerful questions. So pain science and motivational interviewing and coaching, they all blend seamlessly. And so the clients will tell me where to start Mm -hmm. based on the questions I ask. Yeah, Something that I've been covering in in this new season um, is trauma and how our body holds on to trauma, whether it's big T trauma, little T trauma. Mm How do you work with your clients around that? Probably the most important is creating a safe environment for them. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Um, I had a client, she had had back pain for years, and we have maps in our brain. Did you know we have maps of our bodies in Mm -hmm. our brain? And so those maps can become blurry, they can become shrunk, and then our brain isn't receiving accurate information from our body. Mm -hmm. And so thoughts are things. So we also have that idea. I think a lot of people have experienced somebody says they have lice and suddenly your head starts itching. Do you have lice? No. (laughs) Does your head itch? Yes. Because that's how powerful thoughts and our nerve impulses are. And so with this particular client, uh, there was an exercise I wanted her to try and she couldn't even tolerate watching me do it. So her watching me increased her pain. Mm. And so meeting her where she was, was we tabled that exercise mm-hmm. for probably a month. Yeah. And then I'm like, hey, are you ready You know, to try and watch again? Mm-hmm. And when she was ready, we did. And yeah. so it's really these little baby steps meeting them where they are. That's so important with trauma. Mm-hmm. It's so important, especially because physical therapy is a touching profession. Yes. Uh, I've had people who I have not been able to touch for six months. Mm. They came to me, you know, for one body part. So then we have to do it indirectly through other body parts. And then eventually their system trusts me enough Mm -hmm. and trusts themselves enough that they'll let me to whatever that original body part was. Oh, wow. I know you're 
working on a course? I am. Yeah, can you talk to us about that? Yes, I am working on a shorter version called I Rise For Me, uh, going from fear and overwhelm to confidence and clarity for divorce mediation. This first one I'm hoping to launch early in the spring, and it is a four-week course really helping you set up a solid foundation for approaching mediation. The reality is it can probably be used for many challenging life transitions, whether it's retirement or relationship changes, as you mentioned, even empty nest, whatever it might be. Um, and it's, it's four modules and creating this background piece of I rise is an acronym recognition, information, strategy, and emerging, and then developing their intention. We spend a fair amount of time just developing intention. Something I love called the presentation tree, which is where we refer to the roots as the intention. Mm -hmm. The trunk is your body language. The branches are your thoughts, and then the leaves are your words. Mm -hmm. So doing different interactive things to help them decide, all right, this is my starting point right. to get me to where I want to be. Yeah. And then the second one is going to be longer, and then that's going to integrate a whole lot more of these other tools, mm -hmm. whether it's mindfulness. I'm going to get into all six of the lifestyle medicine gears, mm -hmm. exercise, nutrition, social substance, social connectedness, social uh, avoiding risky substances. So all of those things will be integrated into that one as well. Right. That's wonderful. Because even if clients don't live in this area, they'll still be able to benefit from it is an online there. program. Yeah. yeah. Yes. And I'm going to offer um, probably group Q&A. Mm -hmm. I'm pondering with the one on one coaching. I'm still sussing yeah. that out. Yeah, that's amazing. So Jen, where can our listeners find you? iriseforme.com is growing and it uh, it's not fully flushed out yet, but if you go to that website, you can sign up for newsletters and information and I have a, uh, a strategy guide that's there if you choose to sign up and it's got just three components that are critical to think about with any transition and then in particular if you're thinking or know you're headed for divorce mediation. Amazing. And we will have all those links in the show notes for our listeners to find you. And are you on social media? I am on LinkedIn. Okay. I will give you the LinkedIn We'll put address. it in the show yes. notes, yes. Because my name is several changing times. and all that funny stuff. <laughs> it's like, how do you say your name one more time? <laughs> right, exactly. <laughs> okay. Yeah. Awesome. Well, Jen, thank you so much for being on the show. It was such, it was so much fun just learning about just pain management and all of that stuff. And I think our listeners are really going to benefit from this, whether they're going through a divorce or any other uh, life transformation. Right. Thank you so much. I am so happy to get the ripple out there. Yes. <laughs> and that is all for today. Bye for now. <laughs>